Bible. All right, guys. Today we're going to be talking. Um, I just kind of loosely titled it. Uh, what is that to you? You follow me. All right. So I'm going to start reading. If you want to just listen to me, or you can turn on your Bibles if you want. Just keep the places that I gave you. If I assigned you something, um, I'm going to read John 21:22, and this is talking about uh, everybody knows about Judas who betrays Jesus, right? Everybody knows that story. Betrays Jesus to the Pharisees, and then they come and arrest him, and he's crucified and killed. And then here's Peter asking about. Uh, Peter said, Lord, what about this man? What about the man that betrays you? And Jesus says, if I want him to remain till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. So here's Peter, okay, and he's, he's walking with Jesus, and he's worried about what are we going to do, like me and the disciples, like what are we going to do about this guy who betrayed you? And Jesus says, don't worry about what he's doing. I want you to follow me. All right, so the importance of that is that... Uh, you can't control what other people do in life, okay? You can only control what you do. If somebody else is doing the wrong thing, that doesn't give you the excuse to do the wrong thing. As Christians, we're called to follow Jesus, no matter what anybody else does. Just because somebody else doesn't follow Jesus doesn't mean that you don't follow Jesus. Does that make sense? Like it, it, and that's not any, it's, this is not a, like a happy sermon, but the point is that even, uh, even when everybody else... Is, Joseph was a young boy, okay? And he got betrayed... Not by his enemy, he got betrayed by his own brothers, okay? And not because he did anything bad, he got betrayed because he was a good kid, okay? And his brothers didn't like him for it, and they betrayed him. So he was doing the right thing, and he got betrayed, okay? And he got put in slavery. And he kept doing the right thing. Time after time, he kept doing the right thing, even though everybody else was doing the wrong thing. He was in a foreign land. Nobody would have faulted him for eating, you know, the wrong foods. Nobody would have faulted him for changing religions, for worshiping the gods where he was at, but he didn't do that, okay? And then... Uh, you got Genesis 39, verse 6? Yes. And you're going to read like from verse 6 to verse 23. Go ahead and read that. All of that? Yeah. So he left in Joseph's care everything. Good. That's good enough. All right, good. So, it's good, man. You did fine. Um, so that story, Joseph was, <laughs> Joseph was sold as a slave. He literally had nothing, but he kept doing the right thing. And finally, he was put in charge of pretty much all that the king had. Okay? And... The king's wife, who obviously was probably pretty beautiful, okay, because she's a king's wife and the king pretty much had whoever he wanted back then. Okay, so what I want you to notice was that he said that how could I commit this sin against God, right? Even though nobody else was around, he knew that it was the wrong thing. And even though, okay, he could have done it and gotten away with it, nobody, like I said, nobody else was around. She obviously wanted to sleep with him time after time. She wasn't going to say anything. He wasn't going to say anything, even though nobody would have known, and he could have gotten away with it. That's not why he did the right thing. He did the right thing because he realizes that God sees everything, and you're called to do the right thing all the time. Okay? And even though, if you continue, I'm not going to have him keep reading, but you continue on the story. If he would have slept with her, he would have got to sleep with a beautiful woman, and he would have gotten away with it, and nobody would have been the wiser. Okay? And everything would have been fine, um, as far as the world goes. But he chose to do the right thing. And the woman screams, and then he gets arrested and thrown in jail. Even He gets punished for doing the right thing again for like the second time in his life. He gets thrown in jail. He chose to do the right thing, and he gets put in jail for it. And I'm here to tell you that, especially in an environment that you might find yourselves in in the future, you may be the one that gets ostracized and gets get put out of the community for doing the right thing. That doesn't give you an excuse to do the wrong thing. Even if the wrong thing's easy, even if the wrong thing's more pleasurable, you still know it's wrong, and you've got to do the right thing. And I'm sure Joseph had some doubts at the time, but he spent years in prison for that, okay? But what I'm, what I'm, the point of that is he always did the right thing, and we still read about him today. Like, he's still a great person in the nation of Israel and later Christianity. Like, he's one of the great heroes of the Bible. Okay, and even though it sucked at the time, he did the right thing, and he was exalted above all the people of his entire nation, eventually. Even though at the time it sucked. But... You don't do it for the praise. You don't do it to get exalted because a lot of times, like Joseph, you're going to get ostracized and you're going to get you're going to kind of get shunned for doing the right thing. But you got to It's it doesn't matter. That's you don't do the right thing for praise. You don't do the right thing for recognition. You do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. That's what God calls you to do. So we said not a super easy sermon, but uh, an important one, I think. Who here has seen Hacksaw Ridge? It's an awesome movie, right? If you haven't seen it, I encourage you to see it. It's really good, but. You'll notice, kind of similar to Joe, and that's a true story, right? 
Uh, if you guys didn't know, that's all based on a true story. So that guy, he's a Christian. I'm not a Seventh Day Adventist, but I don't, I don't disagree with the man and his beliefs. Um, we're all called to different things. I'm not a pacifist, but uh, he stuck to his beliefs. Okay, and everybody turned their back on him. Okay, everybody. Like even his wife at one point was like, "Why don't you just do the wrong thing, go against your beliefs, and do it?" And it would have been an easy thing to do, and everybody would have been like, "Yay!" And he would have gotten accepted. But that's not what he did, right? He didn't. Even when everybody left him and he got thrown in prison, kind of just like Joseph, he still chose to do the right thing. And he got angry and he had his doubts. And it's okay to be angry and have doubts. But uh, he still did the right thing. And at the end, I mean, he's one of the great heroes of World War II. Eventually. But at the time, it sucked. At the time, he was put in prison. He was beat up all for his beliefs, even though he didn't do anything wrong. Even though he told them before, he's like, I'm not going to pick up a rifle. And they said, fine. And then the army changed their mind. And I'm here to tell you that the army may not always do the right thing, as crappy as that might sound. But the army is a great organization. The National Guard is a great organization. But just if somebody in charge of you is doing the wrong thing, that doesn't give you the excuse to do the wrong thing. Okay? Look at the Nazis. Their organization went pretty bad pretty quick, right? And what did they do? They just did what they were told, even though they knew. You know those guys at Auschwitz knew that wasn't the right thing to do, putting people in the gas chamber, right? Right. But they just did it. Why? Because it was the easy thing to do. Because, oh, that's what they told me to do, and that's my job. But it wasn't the right thing to do. And I hope that, that never, you're never put in that situation. But if you are, even if it means your life, you ought to be able to stand up and do the right thing. Even if the organization you belong to is doing the wrong thing. So, um, who here has ever seen, uh, most of you have seen Hacks Over Who has ever seen High Noon? Have you ever seen High Noon? Gary Cooper, Old Western. Yeah. It's a good, it's a great movie. If you ever want to watch a movie, I think it's probably an hour and a half long. It's one of my favorite movies. Anyway, same story. It's, a, it's a, in the Old West, but uh, it's Gary Cooper's the actor. But he's the sheriff, and these outlaws are coming into town, and he's like outnumbered like five to one, and he pretty much knows he's going to die. And everybody's saying, man, just leave town. If you leave town, there's not going to be any problem. And it's the easy thing to do, and he just got married that same day. Um, and the guy he put in prison got released because he knew the governor, kind of a shady deal, and he's coming back into town to kill him, and everybody's saying, just leave town, just do the easy thing, and just leave, and we'll be okay, don't worry about us, and even his wife is like, we just got married, you should be worrying about me, everybody's telling him to do the wrong thing, and he stays and does the right thing, and everybody leaves him, because, I mean, literally, literally, everybody leaves him, but he stays and does the right thing, um, it's a great movie, so what I'm getting at is that even Hollywood, you know, even the culture, even though they want you to do the wrong thing, they will eventually respect you for doing the right thing. They'll never respect you for doing the wrong thing. You might fit in and be cool or whatever, but you'll never stand out in this world. We're called to be salt and light in this world, right? Jesus calls to be salt and light, okay? Everybody's attracted to light. Everybody craves salt. I mean, maybe not in our American diet where we get salt all the time, but if you've ever been somewhere where you don't get salt, it's something that people crave because it's different. It's, it's, it's a special thing, and you're called to be different because you are Christians. And they may ostracize you for it and teach you for it at the time when all your friends and stuff are doing the wrong thing, doing drugs, drinking, sleeping around or whatever, and you're not. They might teach you for it, but when they go home at night, they respect you for it. I guarantee it, even if they won't admit it. Um, so that's just a little thing there. Um, anybody have anything to add? Nothing? Good. Um, yeah, like I said, not a super good sermon, but... Uh, Trust me, if you do what God wants you to do, he'll take care of you. It may not seem like it at the time, and it may take longer than, he, than you would expect it to, longer than you want sometimes, but in the end, God will take care of you. He will provide. All right. All right, guys, we'll go ahead and close in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for letting us gather here today. Thank you for this time together. God, please give us the wisdom to understand what the right thing is and the courage to carry it out when we know what that thing is, God. Uh, please be with us. We know that you forgive us. We know that we don't always do the right thing, and we know that when we mess up that you forgive us. We thank you for all the good things we have in life. We thank you most of all for your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. In his name we pray.